It really enables us to minister all over the world, and God is good. Amen? Amen. We've been ministering on, this is the year of... Boy, you're awful quiet. I said, this is the year of... Next level. level. And that's right. It's time for all of us to go to the next level in our lives, whether it be spiritually, whether it be in your marriage, all these different aspects we're covering this year. It's that God wants to take you from where you are There's a great disease called inertia. Has anybody ever heard of inertia? Inertia is when you stall and you do nothing. For the next 20 years, you're the same person. Do you realize you're going to be the same person you were five years ago, except for how God changes you from the inside out? It's so imperative for us to know that God wants to take us to the next level. And some of us are fighting our next level. Well, you know, I'm older now, and I'm just happy where I'm at. I want you to know that if you're breathing, can you pinch the person next to you? If you're breathing, that means you got levels to go. Can I hear an amen? Amen. It's time to grow. Turn to someone and say, it's time to grow. We've been ministering on next level relationships. This is not just for married couples. This is for singles. And maybe someday you'll be married. But let's just say you're a single and never planning on getting married. How does this series fit into you? It fits perfect. Because if you work, you work with somebody from the opposite sex. Which means you got to know how to talk their language. You see, it's all about understanding how to understand and communicate to the opposite sex. Now, I want to remind you that God made male and female. That God made male and female. There are not 112 genders. There are two, male and female. Can I hear an amen? Amen. We are the church. The world doesn't penetrate us. We penetrate the world. And the truth will make you free. There are not 112 genders. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm doing it on purpose. And, there are not 112 genders, only two. Turn to some and say, male, male. and female. Amen. And I want you to know that I would never want to be a female. I would never want to be a man. The very first week we talked about this, and I'm not going to get into it, but you need to go back online and watch it, how a man and woman think. Men compartmentalize. Women are all just one big ball of yarn that all work together. Every part touches another part. And we also talked two weeks ago, before Easter, what a woman needs. Not a woman wants, a woman needs. Well, this morning, it's the man's day. Can I hear an amen? It's what a man needs. I didn't say what a man wants. I said what a man needs to have their relationship go to the next level. This is where we're talking about communication. Because as many of us, we've learned how to have a relationship from our parents. How many of you had parents that might have been a little bit uh, uh, dysfunctional? How many of you as a parent are a little bit dysfunctional? How many of you know the other parent next to you is dysfunctional? (laughs) Dysfunction, function, watch. (laughs) So dysfunction, listen, we only know what we've been taught. You only know how to have a relationship by how you viewed, by how you've learned. And usually our greatest teachers are our parents. And I want you to realize they're not always the greatest teachers. Nothing against mom and dad, amen? I love my mom and I love my dad. But in the era I grew up in, they never talked about anything. You always hid everything. It was a normal thing. You don't let family's laundry be aired out. Anybody ever heard that themselves? You never say anything about what's happening. Well, what what that meant was, I don't want anybody to, to, to learn anything beyond what I'm teaching you. You've got to be able to learn. And that's what this whole series is about. Turn to someone and say, my next level relationship It's about to happen. happen. Now, next week, we're doing something we have never done before at His Tabernacle. We're doing a question and answer panel. Now, if you said no questions, we are not doing a question and answer panel. So you need to send your questions on relationships to His Tab, H-I-S-T-A-B, at HisTabernacle.com, 
or go on the Facebook or go on Messenger or however you want to do it. Get the questions to us so that we can have a question and answer giving you biblical principles that will help your relationship. Don't write your name. We're not going to say it anyways. Bring your relationship to the next level. Maybe you're in a time of struggle. So I'm now I'm going to hand it over to my wife. This is what men need. Turn to someone and say, this is what a man needs. Tell somebody else, a man needs this. I want to start by saying love is not enough to keep a relationship together. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Love is not enough to keep a relationship but I together. I love you, honey. I love you. And the grass is greenest where it is watered where you tend it is where it is greenest and that's actually scriptural proverbs 27 verse 18 says whoever tends the fig tree shall eat of its fruit we have to tend our relationships yes. in order to be able to enjoy them and that's one of the first steps and that's why we're bringing this as a church to you so that we can start tending our relationships and paying attention to them. So what do men need? And we're going to start with the top need of men. And Jesus. And explain why it is the top need of men. Pastor, the number one need of men oh. is sex. <laughs> Within the confines within the confines of marriage. So specifically speaking, within the confines of marriage. But let me explain <laughs> why this is such a great need for a man. I know some of you women think that he's just full of the devil because he wants sex all the time. I mean, you just had sex. You can't, but you must be filled with the devil. <laughs> no, listen. God created men with seed. When he created man, he created them with seed to produce the generations. It is their created, intended purpose. It is not because they are filled with the devil. It is because they were created with seed to create the generations. And God designed them that way. They're not broken. You don't need to take them to the therapist because they want sex. You don't need to bring them to pastor he's going to tell them he's going to tell you he needs sex it's the need of a man god has put that in every single one and in genesis chapter 2 verse 18 he says it is not good for man to be alone i will create him a helper so he created woman for man he he designed men not to be alone so in the confines of marriage, sex is the number one need of a man. Now, it's not just a want. We already described it was what they were created with. Housing, it is what they need. Just like a car that we talked about a few weeks ago, it needs gasoline. A car doesn't want gasoline. It actually needs gasoline to go. And can I say, not only do men need sex, Marriage needs sex. Sometimes there's some things that are off chemically or with their mind. Um, there's some physical things, low testosterone, maybe medications that are eradicating sex from marriage. Marriage needs sex. Maybe you need prayer and you need healing or you need to go to a doctor, but marriage needs sex. It is so vitally important to keep that which God created and God designed functioning and working in your marriage. You notice I'm being really good, right? Because I got a lot to say. <laughs> there could be, and the reasons it's in the confines of marriage, because premarital sex 
and pornography, which is not in the confines of marriage, by the way, are things that skew sex. That's what uh, is breakdown of the sex and marriage relationship are those things. That's why God ordained it to be in the confines of marriage. And in the confines of marriage, it is good. good. Woohoo! <laughs> It now, now listen, I, I do want to talk about this because honestly, this is where we're having serious issues in our world today with men and women being so broken in marriage. It's because sex outside of marriage is sin. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sex outside of marriage is sin. Amen. Now listen, they did a study on the millennials. And the millennials in the church world now no longer believe that sex is a sin before marriage. But I want you to hear me. According to the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. According to the Word of God, sex before marriage is sin. Amen. Amen. Sex before marriage is sin. Well, I know. God just likes to steal all the fun from us. No, no, no. You don't understand. What they've done is they've done studies, and they've done chemical studies. And what happens is premarital sex and pornography release a different cocktail, a cocktail in your, your physical body that is different from sex during marriage. What's happened is I've had people that have lived together nine years. I just one couple specifically lived together nine years, and they, they came in, they, gave, they got married, and when they got married, they were back within two weeks saying, I think we lost our spark. I said, no, it's a different fire. Yeah, yeah. So premarital sex is a sin because God's trying to protect us from, from doing something that's going to harm us in our, in our time of actual husband and wife relationships. Amen. Now, what's very interesting is that a lot of people today have had many different partners. And what you don't realize is that every time that a man ejaculated into a woman's vagina, that literally the DNA of that man never leaves your body. They can actually study and find out who you were intimate with because of the DNA deposit that was placed in your physical body when you had premarital sex. So it's important for all of us to recognize that God made sex great. Can I hear an amen from the men? Amen. But in the confines of marriage. Yes. Amen. Now, pornography releases such an enormous amount of dopamine and different other chemicals within a man's body. And now it's not just a man's sin. It's a woman's sin. By the way, pornography is a sin. Yes. Amen. If a man looks upon a woman to lust, he has already committed adultery in his heart. Pornography is sin. Why did God say pornography was sin? The reason for that is because, again, the release of the chemical cocktail they have proven has diminished sex between the husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So a husband that's in pornography or a wife that's in pornography, actually their sexual desires for each other diminish. Mm -hmm. I one time had an individual that the wife caught the man in pornography. And I was talking to him. She was very angry. And she said, I want you to realize that if he doesn't stop this, I'm going to divorce him. Because I'm not going to have him thinking about the woman that he's looking on on, 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 on the computer and, and, and having sex with me. That's not going to happen. And sure enough, the man would not give up the pornography and literally lost his marriage. I looked at him and I said, why would you want to sleep with a cold computer when you have a warm wife? <laughs> but he did. He gave up his warm wife for the computer, for the porn. But the reason for that is, is because the rush that you get when you're looking at pornography is that different chemical cocktail. It's the sin cocktail, different from that which is marriage. And that's why God says premarital sex is a sin. And sex that you're having not with your spouse is a sin. Yes. Amen. Amen. We have this new thing where people are getting divorced. And what's happening is, that, or not divorced, they're getting separated. And then what's happening is they're meeting somebody else. Listen, you are still married until the divorce cre decree. Oh, my. You're still married until the divorce decree is done. 
And if you're intimate or even in a relationship with yeah. somebody, before your divorce decree is done, you are committing adultery. Yeah. Oh, my. Preach it, Pastor Spencer. Oh, my God. So women, let me help you out, men. Women don't necessarily need sex in the way your interpretation is. They like sex, but women, really? our number one need, yes, Pastor, mm -hmm. Our number one need is affection, affection. So gentlemen, if you want sex, give affection. Affection will produce sex. Can you explain what affection means? Because uh, yes. my affection is this. Yes, exactly. Pastor really has to learn. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Affection is not sex. They are not synonymous. Actually, Pastor is very good at affection. He hugs me. I like sex. He holds my hand. He kisses me. He gives words of affirmation. He, he's just awesome Make my at breakfast. <laughs> he brings me coffee every single morning, water first. Um, so that is how you get sex is through your affection with your wife. Now, ladies, let me help the men here. You can't be all bundled up in your footy pajamas and your scarf wrapped around your neck with gloves on and a hat, getting into bed, walking around the house, making it like Fort Knox for your husband to even get close to you. You're sending actual messages of rejection to your husband when you do that and they need they, it's not a want it's what, how they were created they need sex so we have to not like be all locked up and actually pursue whoa sorry pursue your husband what does that mean <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> go after them don't wear all that stuff Walk around the house with a little less on so that you're Jeez. accessible. Pursue them. Chase them. Don't make them always feel like they're this dirty, horrible person because they need sex. Yeah, that's we right. Don't turn over when they get in bed. <laughs> so we have to actually take time to tend the garden. Whoa, Jesus. Make time for the grass that's in your own house, that it can be the greenest that it possibly can. We have to actually tend to the need of our husbands in sex. And men? No, I think that's all we need. Nope. This is the part you're not going to like. <laughs> men, you have to be sensitive to a woman's cycles because you're always ready every day all the time anytime anywhere a woman's physical body is not it is the way god did create us we actually have cycles where it is the not devil. accessible to have sex so men you have to be sensitive to those cycles and be aware of those cycles and as the word of god says to come back together quickly so that there's no temptation from the enemy amen say the pastor the next thing a man needs is respect amen. respect is huge in fact the bible in ephesians chapter 5 doesn't tell the woman to love the man the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, men love your wives as Christ loves the church and gave himself for. But you never find in there where it says wife love the husband. You see, the, the Bible says in verse 33 of Ephesians chapter 5, says that women respect your husbands. Yes. Now what happens is when a man truly generates love, the wife will automatically respect so, men, here's the key for you. When you see your wife starting to disrespect you, you need to go back and say, what am I missing in her needs that will not bring forth what I desire? 
Remember, that's the amazing part about how God created man and woman. Women are recipro reciprocatory creatures. Amen. They are responsive creatures. Mm -hmm. Listen, what does that mean? I don't want to be married. I never want to be married. But if you work with women, then you understand that if they are responsive creatures and you walk in, well, you know, if you cleaned your desk, you're not going to get a good response. Can I hear an amen or am I? you got to learn how to create the responses. Because if you truly, genuinely care about somebody, they're going to be responsive to you. Now, we do all know this. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. But God can bring healing through your life to somebody else. Amen. If you're not married, how does this, how does this uh, pertain to you? Well, let's just talk about the sex factor. Listen, you don't need to try the shoe on to make, it, make sure it fits. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, I just need to try the shoe on to make sure it fits. No, no the shoe fits. Yeah, it does. They work together. God created male and female, and the parts work. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really, they're really quiet this morning, and I'm really feeling this because I'm, I'm a little immature for this kind of topic. <laughs> Men need respect. That's okay, honey. Most men are too immature for this, co this topic. <laughs> You're not alone, right, men? <laughs> thank you, thank you. But actually, on the lines of respect, too, is the word of God in Ephesians, when it tells a woman to respect her husband, it does not say if he... Re so, pastor's not letting you off the hook when he says you're responsive. So don't think, ladies, you're getting off the hook because he says you're just reactionary. The Word of God doesn't say, if your husband's perfect, then you respect him. No, it commands us to respect our husbands. So the same way we respond when we respect them, they will respond. I call it prophesying. Wow, I love God. To, there were many, many years of prophecy that went into this awesome, awesome man of God. When he was not behaving the way that I thought he should behave, I would speak and declare. <laughs> she would, man. It was horrible. I, I hated every bit of it. So I, I was, I, like, I'd be a jerk. And then she turned and she'd go, you are the sweetest man. I thank God that you are the, the, the man of God of this house and you treat me with such sincere love. I'm thinking in my head, that's not what I just did. Be quiet. <laughs> but she prophesied what she wanted and watch, it worked. Amen? It, it is a vital need. What is respect? It's to speak highly of your husband. You realize, ladies, that every time you go with your girlfriends and you speak negative about your husband, that you're actually destroying your relationship. Here's another interesting thing. Every time you speak negative to, uh, about your husband, to one of your friends and or family, remember, you'll forgive them tomorrow, but they'll never forget what you told them. You should never tear down your husband. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Men need to be praised. That's part of respect. And I know that doesn't sound really nice. Oh, baby, you're so cute, and you got the nice, you got the nicest butts, and you know, you know, you are you are a great strong. provider. You are strong, even though you can't lift 25 pounds. You know, as a wife, one of your major jobs in respect is is speaking highly of your husband and always praising your husband. In fact, you're part of building his ego. Amen. Boy, it got quiet on that one, didn't it? <laughs> Men need their ego built. Yes. You are such an amazing guy. You start saying that to your man, and he's going to go, well, oh, thank you. <laughs> but seriously, Pastor... Honestly, in society today and even in homes, men receive so little. I mean, even on TV and the programming that's out, there's so much demeaning. There is so little praise yes. and respect for men today. It is something we need to actually double time in our homes. It will change your relationship. It will, it will change your spouse. You start praising him and build that ego, he will find something to live for and fight for and value in himself. Most men do not hear any kind
kind of praise at all in their lifetime. Any. You're always told what you're doing wrong, what, what you can't do good enough, what's not right about you. We need to, as the wife, as the helper that God created for them, to praise them and build them up, even when they are acting foolishly. Actually, more so. I would say more so when they're acting foolishly. You say a lot of nice things about me. What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're all true, honey. It is imperative, ladies. Men need this. It's not a want. So if you're not building your husband, speaking life to your husband, uh, you know, building his ego, then what happens is, listen, if he doesn't get it at home, where's he going to get it? Well, I will tell you this. The devil will send somebody to your man That's right. to give him that. That's right. The enemy hates your marriage because marriage is literally the mirror of heaven. And what happens is the enemy is going to send somebody to tell your husband how cute he is at work. He's going to send somebody to tell him how great a guy he is. You haven't said it in years. Your husband needs to hear it from you, not yes, another woman. Amen, Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Men have emotional needs. We're emotional. <laughs> they just don't show it. <laughs> well, sometimes. yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Our emotional needs are met, ladies, by you, by your respect. If we walk into the house and you're disrespectful to us, listen, if you're finding your husband is finding reasons not to come home, it's because home doesn't have respect. He'll find reasons to stay busy. He's not out cheating with another woman. He's not out doing evil things. But he'll find reasons not to come home. Because if he comes home and there is no peace, there is no respect, then there's no reason to be there. Men must have respect. It is a need within them. And if you learn this, and let me tell you something. You might be saying, oh my goodness, I just got to tell him all the time how good he is. I got to tell him all. Listen, you'll find your husband will love you more, which Amen. means you'll respect him more. It is a process of relationship and communication. When you speak respect to your husband, show your husband respect, then you will find that is one of the highest levels of communication yes. of true, genuine love that a man will ever receive from you. Amen. Say amen or oh my. Amen. Boy, they're very quiet this morning. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, a, worth, a worthy wife is a crown for her husband, but a disgraceful woman is like a cancer to his bones. Hmm. Whew, that was pretty powerful. Sometimes I ask myself, am I a crown to my husband? Sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's really what we need to be asking ourselves. Are we a crown for our husbands? Or are we the ones that are cancer to his bones? Ladies, when you're wearing your pajamas to Walmart, <laughs> you're not a crown. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When the Amen. hair on your armpits are longer than ours, <laughs> you're not a crown. Amen. When you flatulate. Oh. Oh. In Walmart, <laughs> in your pajamas. With your long armpit hairs, you are not a crown. So are you saying, Pastor, that it's a form of respect for us to dress in a way that looks appealing and presentable? Well, uh, every man wants his wife to look good. Amen. Every man wants to parade his wife. He married you because you're the most beautiful woman in the world. Amen. Amen. Come on, man. Be wise. This is your moment. Turn to your <laughs> wife and say, you're the most beautiful woman in the world. That is a wise man. <laughs> if you're not married, then listen, ladies. If your husband is not telling you that, then there's a, 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 the guy you're interested in not telling you that you're the most beautiful woman in the world, and he just wants to get in your pants, oh. dump him. Oh, bye. Amen. By the way, men and ladies, the Bible says you should not be dating somebody that's not born again. Amen. The Bible says that is unequally yoked. Say amen or oh my. Amen. You should never date somebody who doesn't love Jesus more than you. Mm -hmm. Well, that got quiet amen. awful quick. Amen. Let's move on. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 12. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. A woman builds up, not tears down her spouse. 
When you walk in the house, ladies, and all of a sudden your, your wife starts nagging you the moment you walk in, I want you to realize that that is not a compliment for you. Can I hear an amen or oh my? Amen. The man needs to be able to walk into the house and know that he's respected in his own home. Amen. Ladies, how you respect your husband is how your children will respect your husband. Amen. If you call your husband stupid, your kids will call your husband stupid. If you're not building up your husband, your kids will not build up your husband. And watch. Now, my wife already mentioned it once. I'm going to say it one more time. I challenge you to watch television. They make men. They are making men. They are making husbands look as they're idiots. Yeah. Stupid. Un, un, undeserving of praise and respect. Yeah. And I want you to know what that's doing. That's the demoralization of the family, yeah. which will do what? If you cannot respect the husband you can see, how can you respect the husband you cannot? Yeah, amen. Amen. One more thing a man needs is? A man needs support. Again, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says, man should not be alone. I will create for him a helper. God created us women to help their husbands, to be a support for their husbands. We were actually created for that purpose. So we need to keep in mind and remember each day that we are there to encourage them, to build them, to respect them, to make their place, their home a place of peace. We're to support them, even in the endeavors that are scary. I mean, if my husband not jumped off a bridge. I don't want to say that statement because I wouldn't follow him off a bridge because you don't follow him into sin. Oh, um, say that one more time. You do not follow your husband Ladies, into sin. Ladies, you do not follow your husbands into sin. That's where the line is drawn. There is a line. There is a line. Do not follow your husbands into sin and rebellion. But if there was any ridiculous, outlandish vision that my husband has had, and he's had them. You're sitting in it. I will jump out in support of him. We must support their dreams, their visions, their aspirations. We've got to get behind their faith in those things and allow them to jump out and lead us. It is so imperative to be a support to our husbands. Um, men, you need to give her something to support. You must be motivated. Listen, if you're laying on the couch, man, you can't expect respect. You must work. The Word of God says if a man does not work, he does not eat. Well, he's going to work someday. I have faith he'll get off the couch. No. Men, this is on you. You have a responsibility to give us something to help to give us something to respect, to give us something to support. And you need to lead us. Proverbs 14, 1 says, a wise woman builds her house. Women, build your house, build your husband. But a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. And then Proverbs 21, 9 says, it is better to live alone in the corner of an attic than with a quarrelsome and lovely wife. So maybe you do dress all up and make yourself look good, but you're ranting, nagging, arguing, Dear disrespecting. God. They would rather live in a corner of the attic or stay at work and not come home. We are called men need support. support. They need it. Genesis 2, right when he created man, he looked and he said, they shouldn't be alone. I'm going to send a helper. That's why he created us women, to meet the needs of the man. So there are three main needs. Sex. They say sex. Sex. Amen. Say sex again. Sex. Uh, sex one more time. Sex. Jesus is good. <laughs> sex. We need sex, respect, and support. support. Ladies, these are three needs a man has. They're not wants, they're needs. It's the gasoline in their car. If you don't provide it, there's not going to be a next level in your relationship. And if you choose to build this, you'll find your relationship will be built. Now, if you're single, you need to know that these are going to be the needs of your husband. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants to be married. 
That's right. Amen. My mother-in-law, when my uh, father-in-law divorced her after 25 years, I looked at Edith like after 10 years of being single. I said, Edith, aren't you going to remarry? She said, why would I want a man in my life telling me what to do, what to eat, where to go, and always wanting sex? And she was fine with that. Amen. Don't say amen if you're married. Do, yes, not, do not say, say amen. amen if you're married. But that's okay if that's you. That's fine. But listen now, if you are going to get married, these are principles yeah. you know you have to meet within the man's life. Amen. And men, I want to remind you, if you skip that week of what a woman needs, you need to go back and watch that. It's free on our church YouTube. You need to know your wife needs specific things Amen. to build your relationship to the next level. We're going to end with this. This is how you destroy a man. Number one, a woman many times insults and belittles their man to try to motivate them to change. Ew. That will never change your man. Mm -mm. Amen. It's awful quiet in here today. Number two, talking negatively about him in front of other people. That's never good. That will only destroy your man. Not allowing him to lead. Come on now, say amen. amen. Not supporting him in his dreams, his passions, and desires. Smothering him. Say amen. Amen. He needs his empty box. <laughs> and then rejecting him sexually. Men are sensitive. They don't cry usually. They get angry. Mm -hmm. So the first time he asks for sex and you look at him and say, I'm tired. And you might legitimately be tired. He's got to go. He, he usually flop over. And he accentuates the flop. Just to let you know how mad he is. Because what's happened is he just felt physically, emotionally rejected. If the more you do that, he'll stop asking you. When he stops at, listen, I always say this to my wife. When I stop slapping your butt in the kitchen, you've got problems. <laughs> say amen or oh my. I have been stabbed, like <laughs> physically stabbed for punching my, I mean for slapping my wife. In the hiney in me? the kitchen. Not me. Yeah, you. I'll end with that story. <laughs> Whenever she's in the kitchen, I just see her butt, right, you know, sitting there. Oh, whack. <laughs> I, feel, I feel the Lord. <laughs> Slap her hiney. One day, she grabbed one of those pokers, you know, the ones that you use for your grill. Cutco, the good stuff. And I slapped the rear end. Whack. And she grabbed that poker and went, Whoa! and it went right into my leg, stuck there by itself. No, 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 no. Blood that started is, spurting that everywhere. That is exaggerating, exaggerating, exaggerating. It hit my bone. Pastor I Spencer. fell to the ground and cried, why do you hate me? It was self-defense, though. <laughs> All right. It did break the skin. It did. And I did. Scratch. It scratched. I did break the skin and blood <laughs> almost spurted out. So the next time I slapped her butt, she grabbed it and I ran. Man, I'm smart. I'm no fool. The next time I went to the kitchen first and I took pliers with me and bent over every one of those pokers. So I went out to the kitchen, slapped her rear end, and she grabbed that poker and the pointed ends were all <laughs> bent over. It was pretty funny. <laughs> Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Listen, our desire at His Tabernacle Family Church is not just to preach a message to you, but preach one that's going to help you, Amen. build you, strengthen you, Amen. and take your family to the next level. No greater compliment is this, is when your children look at you as mom and dad and say, I want a relationship like yours. There's no greater compliment. The only way for them to do that is if we take our relationships to the next level. Tend the garden. Amen. Tend your garden. Which means men need what three things, ladies? Sex, respect, support. Men, what do we need? <laughs> Nathan, I couldn't hear anybody but you. <laughs> He's getting married real soon. Here we go. Ready? What three things do men need? Say it all together. Sex, respect, support. You do that, and you'll take your man to the next level. Amen. And he'll lead you where you need to go. Amen. Amen.
Father, we just thank you so much that you're a good father. And Lord, you've taught us in your word how to be successful, how to communicate. God, thank you for marriage. Lord, thank you. You said in your word that if a man finds a wife, he's found a good thing. But we pray for all of the women that are in the room that God may not be married. Lord, and desire a man. I pray, Lord, that they'll never sacrifice, Lord, your desires, Lord, just to get married. Lord, I pray, God, there's no man in this room that will set that will sell out God and bring a woman in his and bring a woman into his life that father does not know you in a greater way. Lord, I just pray God that we'll raise up godly families that the world will look and finally say, I want a marriage like them. I need to go to that church because I see how happy you are. I see that your family is truly together. Lord, I pray for those that have been divorced and, Lord, if still have a broken heart, heal their hearts in Jesus' name. Restore their soul, O oh God, in Jesus' name. I pray for those, God, that have had wounds from the past and, Lord, have shut off relationships, that, God, I pray that their hearts will be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, Jesus, you said you came to heal the brokenhearted. Heal hearts this morning. Father, even in marriages, Lord, there are marriages here that, God, they're still just living together. and That's all they're doing. I pray, God, you'll restore their love for each other. I pray, God, you'll restore their marriage. I pray, God, you'll restore their passion to you and to each other. That, Lord, they will run this race and win it all the way for the glory of God. And that their families will say, I want to be like you. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. The Bible says we are the, the bride of Christ, which means God is doing this in our lives. That's why he sent us the word to encourage us, strengthen us. And, 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 and people in this room, if you don't know Jesus, you cannot be the bride of Christ. You cannot, you cannot go to heaven. God has such great things for you. Don't sell God out for this world. Man, it's a cheap date. Today, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm not asking you to join a religion. I want you to know Christ. I'm talking like know Christ, be in a relationship with Christ. He'll wash your sins away, give you purpose, give you destiny, give you honor, give you respect, give you what you need to be successful. Today, if you need Jesus in your life and you want Christ, I want you to slide your hand up this morning. I'm going to pray with you. If you like Jesus, thank you, sir. I see your hand. Very good. You can put it right back down. Is there anyone else that needs Jesus in their life? I'm not going to wait long. Come on. Maybe you're in a backslidden condition. You're not right with God. You know, you're not sure. If you, if you die today, you're not sure if you're still going to go to heaven. You were at one point. You had a vibrant relationship with Christ, but now you don't. You know there's a sin between you and God, and you want to get right. If that's you, slide your hand up right now. I'm not going to wait long. I'm gone late. Come on. Five, four, three, one. Let's all stand to our feet. I'm going to have the prayer team come around the front of the altar. There are folks in this room, you are married and your marriage is a wreck. You're seriously contemplating in your head divorce. But I want you to know this. If God can resurrect Jesus from the dead, he can resurrect your marriage. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. God can breathe life back to your relationship. Restore your love for each other. Restore your and heal your marriage. And today the prayer team's right around the front of the altar. If you need prayer, you might be saying, well, they're young or I don't really know them. It doesn't matter. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage, not an individual. So if your marriage is broken and you want God to start healing your marriage, I'm going to ask you after we leave, you know, to come right around the front of the altar when we dismiss. And the person that raised their hand for Jesus, Mindy, I had to stand up a few more steps so everybody can see you. If you didn't raise your hand for salvation, but you want to give your heart to the Lord, Mindy's right here. And we're going to pray with you, get you a Bible, get you started on this walk, and we're going to see you finish this all the way. Amen. I said amen. Lord, I release a blessing upon this body in Jesus' name. I declare marriages to be, God, what everybody in this community wants to be like. Lord, I declare that our children will want marriages like ours. And Lord, I pray for the singles that they will not substitute the great, the, the great for the good. God, that they will have the best that God, somebody who loves you more than they love them. So, Lord, we just declare blessing over each one for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, and everybody said, we love you. Have an awesome week. Serve God with all of your heart. Make sure you send your questions in. If you need prayer for your marriage, if you need salvation, right here with Mindy.